So hey everyone, welcome to today's class. I hope you are all doing really good and staying safe. So today we are going to study about one very nice service which is called as Amazon Cognito. It is an identity based solution. It allows you to go ahead and uh, create authentication and authorization for any of your web, web facing applications or even your mobile applications. You can connect it to Facebook, Google and create your own customized authentication flows. You can have an identity pool, which generally gives you the IAM roles in order to map it to a respective user. So these are pretty cool uh, uh, services. So today we are also going to do one very small lab, which was requested by one of our users. And that lab is going to consist of connecting Amazon Cognito for authentication with an elastic search cluster so that whenever a person accesses the Kibana endpoint, automatically you will be redirected to the default login page of Amazon Cognito. And then once the user logs in, then he'll be able to see the Kibana dashboards. So that is going to be the lab for today. But let's first understand Amazon Cognito in its entirety. So let's get started. So Amazon Cognito, it lets you add user sign up, sign in and access control, which is role based access control to your web and mobile apps pretty quickly and easily. So before this was pretty difficult in order to get started, like you have to uh, write a lot of code in order to do a lot of stuff like create your own customized OAuth flows. But then when Amazon Cognito came into the picture, it became very easy for developers in order to include their own customized login page, which was provided by Amazon Cognito, which was also customizable in nature. So you can go ahead and uh, create your own uh, customized page using your own uh, framework, such as bootstrap or CSS or even modify some of the HTML context. So Cognito scales to millions of users with uh, supported sign in uh, social authenticity, uh, I mean identity providers such as Facebook or Google or Amazon login. And it also su uh, supports any other open ID connect providers. And it also supports SAML based authentication for connecting to any existing active directories that you may have uh, in your on-prem infrastructure or possibly uh, in your AWS directory service infrastructure. So it's, it's, it's amazing. It also has a concept called as user pools. So user pools provide a secure user directory that scales to hundreds and millions of users. So it has its own directory, but then you can decide not to use the user pool and you can connect it to an existing directory that you already have. So as a fully managed service, user pools are easy to set up without even worrying about any kind of infrastructure. So it provides user profiles. You can set up multi-factor authentication. You can set up your own enhanced authentication flows and so on. And we'll be looking at certain auth flows and I will take you through that uh, later in these slides. And it provides you with an authentication token for any user who signs up directly and for federated users who sign in with social identity providers such as Facebook, Google or Amazon and so on. So people who sign in as federated identities are people who are using a separate identity uh, store such as uh, Facebook, Google, Amazon or you probably your existing active directory. But then people who uh, I mean, directly sign in using a Cognito user pool, they will also be uh, assigned an IAM role as well as uh, given an authentication token. So Cognito uh, provides a built-in customizable UI for user sign up and sign in. And you can also choose to specify that that user can uh, change his password after he first signs in. And you can also use Android, iOS and JavaScript SDKs to add your own customizable pages. So again, I, like I mentioned, a user can sign in through any kind of social identity provider such as Google, Facebook and Amazon and also through enterprise identity providers such as Active Directory using SAML. So now let's take a look at some more features of uh, Amazon Cognito. So it provides you solutions to control access to AWS resources from your app by using the identity pool, uh, which we will be uh, seeing later today and we'll be creating two IAM roles, one for authenticated entities one for unauthenticated entities and users can also verify their identities with a second factor of authentication or called as multi-factor authentication, either using a one-time password or using an SMS or using the Google authenticator. So when Cognito detects that users have entered credentials that have been compromised elsewhere, it prompts them to change their password. So it has adaptive, uh, I mean, uh, enhanced kind of authentication features uh, wherein it's uh, reactive in nature. And again, when it comes to the compliance programs that Cognito uh, follows, uh, it has HIPAA compliance, PCI DSS, SOC compliance, and as well as all of the ISO standards of compliance. So it's pretty secure. And it also encrypts your data at rest. It also encrypts your data in transit. So let's take a look at the Lambda triggers. 
So you can define your own customized authentication challenges. And these odd challenges are beautiful because you would have seen this in some websites. So you would have seen an authentication flow such as when you enter your username and password, the next authentication flow would be to select certain traffic signal lights uh, in, in a set of pictures and so on. So that's the kind of odd challenge that you can have. And that could be possible using a Lambda trigger. But other than that, where would you generally use Lambda triggers? You can use a pre-authentication Lambda trigger that could generally be used for any custom validation or to deny any sign-in request. A post-authentication Lambda trigger to probably uh, log that respective login event or that sign-up event to do any kind of analytics. Or even have a pre-token generation Lambda trigger in order to suppress any token claims. But for sign-up related features, you can have a pre-sign-up Lambda trigger where, where it's nothing but a custom validation to accept or deny the sign-up request. You can have a post-confirmation Lambda trigger in order to send a welcome message or an email. You can have a migrate user Lambda trigger where you migrate a user from any existing user directory to some other user pools or probably to Cognito's user pool itself. And you can have a custom message Lambda trigger and also a pre-token generation Lambda trigger. So these are all the different Lambda triggers that you can have with Cognito where it integrates with Lambda for any kind of customized authentication flows. But then don't worry about this. This never pops up in the exam but just know that this is possible. Okay. So now let's take a look at the simple email service that Cognito generally uh, integrates with in order to send out emails whenever a person signs up or uh, probably uh, to your website. Yeah. So you have certain events in the client app for your user pool that might require Cognito email uh, uh, to your users. So for example, if you configure a user pool to require email verification, Cognito sends an email whenever the user signs up and then it has the link uh, wherein you go ahead and Click on that link and it verifies that user. So most of this we would have seen already in a lot of uh, real-time use cases with different websites. So you sign up to any SaaS product, it sends you an email stating that you have to verify that email first. So this kind of settings can be configured with Cognito. But again, to handle email delivery, Cognito internally has its own email functionality built in. But other than that, you can also give your own SES configuration or Amazon SES configuration. So now let's take a look at app clients and domains. So what provides you with that UI? What provides you with that default login user sign and sign out UI? That is given by an app client. And while you create the app client, you have to generally mention the callback URL on any kind of successful sign in. Like once you sign in and the sign in is successful, which URL you have to be redirected to. And when you click on the logout button, which URL you have to be redirected back to. So these things can be provided using the app client. An app client generally comes with an app client ID and a client secret. And a domain is nothing but you can configure your address for this sign up, sign up and sign in. The, the, the respective address that you would generally use in order to handle your sign up and sign in. So that address can be a domain that you purchase on Cognito itself. Or you can create your own custom domain and then attach it to Amazon Cognito by having your own customized SSL certificate. But then in today's lab, what we are going to do is we are going to go with Amazon Cognito based domain itself. And we are not going to create the app client. The app client is going to be created from Elasticsearch itself. Okay. So now let's take a look at the identity pool and let's take a look at all of the different auth flows and what identity pools give us in contrast to user pools, which just stores the users and groups. So when you use identity pool, it creates these uh, things for you. So you have to go ahead and specify which user pool you're going to use for the identity pool. You can either go with a Cognito based user pool or you can use an external identity user pool, which is like Facebook, Google or Apple or Amazon and so on. And also you can go ahead and specify user authenticated with any of your existing authentication process. So you can have your own on-premise uh, authentication server where a lot of users use that server in order to log in. You can connect that to the identity pool. So identity pool is nothing but that provides you AWS credentials in order to access AWS services or access these services through API Gateway. Because with the API Gateway also, you can connect Cognito. Okay. So user pool is the one where you store all of your users and groups and also provide IAM roles to that user or that group. But identity pool is the one that provides you with that AWS credentials or the temporary credentials. So now let's take a look at some of the auth flows. And we have four auth flows over here. One is using external provider auth flow and the other one is using a developer authenticated identity auth flow where external provider auth flow is the one that uses social identities and so on. But developer authenticated auth flow is where you have your own application that is doing the authentication and authorization. So let's take a look at this. So the first one is where you have an enhanced simplified auth flow. 
Uh, so the device that you are using logs in using the external identity provider such as Google, Facebook, or Amazon, and that login provider sends back an ID token, and then the device sends that ID token to Amazon Cognito. Cognito validates that token with the social identity provider, and then Cognito returns back the response to the device, and the device using that is going to go ahead and ask for a temporary credentials for that identity, and again Cognito is going to validate that. And then go ahead and talk to AWS STS, which is Secure Token Service, in order to send back that response. Okay, so I hope you got it right. So the device goes ahead and uh, does a login with the social identity provider, and then gets back an ID and token, sends that ID and token to Amazon Cognito, and then which again validates that with the social identity provider, and then sends it back to the device. Where using that token, it's going to ask for credentials, which is temporary credentials. And Cognito is again going to verify that, and then talk to AWS STS in order to give back the uh, credentials with which that device is going to access AWS services. Pretty cool, right? On a very high-level overview. Uh, don't even worry about uh, the implementation aspects of these. We will have separate uh, lectures towards this. Okay. So similarly, we have also have one more where we have the basic auth flow where we are using the assume role with web identity. Uh, this is something that pops up in your exam. So something that you have to remember when you are using uh, login providers with the basic auth flow any kind of social media providers you have to use this particular uh, command which is assume role with web identity in order to get your temporary credentials okay. and then we have one wherein we have the developer authenticated identity auth flow so this is something that is uh, different than your uh, social media providers because uh, here you have your own customized authentication solution so the device always first logs in with the developer provider uh, authentication service and then it, the developer provider authentication service goes ahead and gets the open ID and token for that developer identity from Amazon Cognito, which is then sent back to the provider, which again sends it back to the device, which the device exchanges it for credentials or temporary credentials, which is again given by AWS STS. And then we do have the basic flow wherein again they are going to go ahead and use the assume role with web identity, where again you are going to go ahead and get some temporary credentials. So again, this developer provider could be your own customized open ID solution. Okay. So uh, some of these API calls that you have to do assume role with web identity, it returns a set of temporary security credentials for users who have been authenticated in a mobile or web based application with a web identity provider. So that's the reason why even in the previous slide, it's nothing but a web application, which you have written, which is going to talk to Cognito in order to get the ID and the token. So you will be using the assume role with web identity over there too. So example providers include Amazon Cognito, login with uh, Amazon, Facebook, or Google, or any kind of open ID connect compatible solution. But then the credentials that are given back to you, it lasts only for one hour by default, but then you can go ahead and configure this to be between one hour to 12 hours. So one more thing that you use, one more API that you use when you're working with Active Directory is SAML which is assume role with, uh, assume role with sample it is uh, it's a markup language so it returns a set of uh, security credentials for users who have been authenticated via a saml authentication response and this operation provides a mechanism for tying an existing enterprise identity store like microsoft active directory to a role based access of aws credentials so therefore you will not have your iam users or groups created in aws you will have all of your groups and users created in the active directory and then you're going to create your roles on AWS. And then you will be specifying that if suppose the request comes from this particular group, I would like this role based access to be applied. So now let's take a look at the role based access control that Cognito provides you. So Cognito identity pools assign your authenticated users a set of temporary credentials. These permissions are controlled through IAM roles that you create. You can define rules to choose the role for each user based on the user IDs token. You can define a separate role for authenticated users, but you can also define a separate role for unauthenticated users who are your guest users who don't have to authenticate themselves in order to access those endpoints. And I'll show you as to how to create this on the identity pool side where we create a separate IAM role for authenticated users and we create a separate IAM role for unauthenticated users. Now let's take a look at security. Some of the best practices because Amazon Cognito, it confirms to the AWS shared responsibility model. It includes certain regulations and guidelines for data protection. So the best practices when it comes to IAM, let's take a look at that. 
Always use multi-factor authentication with each AWS account. Always, always, always use TLS to communicate with AWS resources. Set up API and user activity logging using AWS CloudTrail. Use AWS encryption solutions along with default security controls within AWS services for encryption at rest and transit. Probably you can use KMS or you can use CloudHSM. Please do use advanced managed security services such as Macy that detects uh, and classifies and protects all of your personally identifiable information that are residing within your S3 bucket or even in your CloudTrail logs. So these are some of the best practices when it comes to Cognito security. Let's also look at how it provides data encryption at rest and in transit. So Amazon uh, Cognito provides data encryption at rest uh, in accordance with industry standards. And anyone who is using the TLS version 1.0 or 1.2 and later, or even using some of these cipher suits such as the DHC cipher suit or the EC DHC cipher suit or any mo most uh, modern system such as Java 7 and later onwards, by default itself, they support these modes. So you don't have to worry about it. Whenever you establish connectivity to Amazon Cognito from your Java application and so on, all you need is only the Cognito uh, uh, user pool ID as well as uh, the region endpoint. So based on which you can directly connect. So that means you, you can use the TLS for encryption in transit and by default, all of your data is encrypted at rest. Now let's also take a look at some of the logging and monitoring features of Amazon Cognito that it integrates with CloudTrail and CloudWatch. So monitoring is always an important aspect. So some of the CloudWatch metrics that you'll get is how many signups were successful, how many sign-ins were successful, and you can always monitor this by creating your own metrics and your own uh, visualizations and dashboards in CloudWatch. And in regards to CloudTrail, whenever a person creates an identity pool or deletes an identity pool or lists any identity pools, automatically you can get notification based on which, or you can even find out who was that person who did that action. So finally, in terms of security best practices, I just have one point for you. So other than the default username and password that you have for the login aspects, please do also configure multi-factor authentication in Amazon Cognito. And in order to go ahead and get that benefit of uh, one more layer of authentication, where it's also going to ask you in regards to a one-time password or uh, our SMS text message, or even use your Google Authenticator device uh, in order to uh, sign up to that uh, respective application that you're having Cognito interface with for the authentication and authorization. So now uh, we have finished off with the slides. Let's take a look at the practical aspects of Amazon Cognito. And like I mentioned, this is a request that came from one of our users in order to integrate Cognito with Elasticsearch. So that's what I'll be doing today. But before that, I'll show you as to how to do everything in regards to Cognito. Okay. So I've already logged into my AWS account. I'm in the US East one region. Let me go to Cognito. So it's consumer identity management and AWS credentials for federated identities. Something to remember. So Cognito should be available in some of the regions, not all of the regions. So I'm, I'm going to stick to Northern Virginia. So you have user pools and identity pools. Like I mentioned, user pools are the ones that where you store your users and so on. But you can have your federated identities also configured over here. But then identity pools is the one that provides you with the temporary credentials in order to access AWS services. So let's take a look at user pools and let's create one. I'm going to review the defaults for the user pool, but then I'm going to show you literally all of the settings. So the pool name that I'm going to give is, I'm going to call this as Kibana Auth as a pool name. I'm going to step through all of the settings, but ultimately I'm going to go with the default itself. So you can go through all of these aspects on the left side. So you can allow uh, for the username, you can allow uh, sign in with verified email address or with phone number and so on. Some of the standard attributes that you would like to uh, require is your email, gender, locale. So you can enable all of these in order to see it on your page. And you can also add any custom attributes that you would like. I'm just gonna leave this page as it is. In regards to the password policy, you can have a minimum length of eight characters or you can modify this. It requires numbers, special case characters, uppercase and lowercase. So that means any password that does not conform to this password policy will not be set. And you can also choose to, uh, I mean, ex expire a temporary password set by administrators within seven days, but then users passwords will expire only after a specific time period, not after seven days. Okay. So this is just for the temporary password that is set by the administrator. And in regards to MFA and verifications, you can have that over here. You can choose to enable MFA and have it as required rather than optional. And then you can also choose to how they will be able to recover their account. If suppose they do forget their uh, email address uh, or, or their password and so on. And also you can go ahead and choose which attributes you would like to verify, whether you would like to verify both email address and phone number or just the email alone. 
and you must also provide a role for Cognito to send SMS messages. If suppose you do choose to have uh, the uh, a one-time password as your MFA strategy. So in order to message customizations, you can go ahead and choose SES where you would like to specify a welcome email address and you can go ahead and customize that. And you can also choose your reply to email address and your from email address from whom it should be sent. By default, it's going to use Cognito, but then you can also go ahead and choose to have SES. So like I mentioned, email, uh, I mean, uh, sending is by default enabled in Cognito, but then you can also go ahead and enable SES. And you can also customize your email verification message, which is pretty cool. And also your user invitation messages. So these are all the things that Cognito provides us with in regards to user pools, which is pretty cool. You can obviously add tags and we know what tags are very important for in order to track costs across your entire AWS infrastructure. So in terms of devices, you can always remember uh, your users devices or you can choose to not remember or probably just go with user opt-in because this generally, uh, I mean, you, you can integra integrate this with web, uh, web based applications or even mobile based applications. So you can choose to remember user devices. And finally, when we come to app clients, this is where you would possibly add an app client and this enables uh, your default sign in and sign up page that Cognito provides you with. And I'll show you that once we have done our entire lab and you'll see that when we access the Kibana's endpoint, you will by default get an user uh, sign in and sign up page. And that is given only when you have an app client ID and you have to specify your callback URLs and your sign out URLs. And finally, in terms of triggers, you can always see these authentication workflows and triggers that we uh, spoke about in the slides. You can have Lambda functions uh, do any of these actions, which is pretty cool. And finally, you can go ahead and review your settings. So we didn't enable uh, much. We just stuck to the defaults. So let's go ahead and create this pool. So once you create your Cognito user pool, the next thing that we are, we are going to do over here is we are going to grab the pool ID, which is important for us. And I'm going to go ahead and just keep it pasted over here. So other than that, what we would also like to go ahead and do is in regards to the app integration, I would like to configure my own customized domain name over here. I'm going to go with Kibana auth 2395 and I'm going to check whether this is available. Yep. The domain is available. Let's go ahead and save our changes. Okay, cool. So you can also do any kind of UI customization that you would like where you can go ahead and drag a logo, go ahead and do all of your uh, CSS customizations and all that, which is amazing. And then finally, we are going to take a look at identities, which means we will be going to federated identities. So let's go to federated identities. And this is where we'll be calling our identity pool name. I'm just going to call it as Kibana Auth. You can't have any kind of spaces over here or any kind of hyphens. So you can choose to enable identity pool for unauthenticated identities, where they are going to use a separate role in order to access, access your application. But then we are not going to enable other uh, unauthenticated identities. It does nothing but create another IAM role for you, which uh, guest users will probably be using in order to uh, log into your application. And again, we are going to enable the basic uh, auth flow rather than going with any uh, enhanced or customized auth flow for this particular example. And again, you can see over here under authentication providers, we can use our user pool ID app client ID over here, but then I'm not going to use the Cognito user pool right now, but we will be using that. But this entire configuration will be done from the elastic search side. But other than that, you can see that we can integrate it with Amazon, integrate it with Apple, with Facebook, Google plus, Twitter, any kind of open ID connect providers, SAML for active directory integration and any custom identity providers such as your own authentication servers and so on. Okay. So these are all the different authentication providers that Cognito provides you with. So I'm just, I'm not going to integrate Cognito right now with user pool, with this identity pool. I'm just going to allow Elasticsearch to do that. So directly, I'm just going to go ahead and click on create pool. Okay. I think you must either enable or not again. Oh, okay. So I, I'm also going to go ahead and enable, even though I'm not going to use it. Let me go ahead and enable that. Yep. Let's click on create pool. It's going to take me to IAM where I have to create two IAM roles, one for authenticated role, one for unauthenticated role. So this is called as the authenticated role, which is called as auth role. The one which is for unauthenticated users is called as unauth role. You can also take a look at the policy. Also take a look at the policy for unauthenticated flow and as well as for authenticated. Yep. Let's go ahead and click on allow. So it'll redirect us back to this SDK, which we can go ahead and get started. But then we are not going to do any kind of coding over here. 
what we are going to do is we are going to go to elastic search we are going to create a new do domain keep all of these settings the default if you don't know how to configure elastic search on aws please do take a look at our uh, lecture before where we discussed about elastic search or it could be possibly under the real world scenarios section for log analytics so take a look at uh, how do you create elastic search domains over there I'm just going to breeze through these settings pretty fast. I'm going to go with development testing. I'm going to call my domain uh, test domain. I'm going to go with the least instance type so that I'm not charged a lot. T2 small. It's more than enough for me. Just one node is more than enough. Uh, just to show you the demo. 10 GB is okay. I'm not going to go with dedicated master nodes. Click on next. So I'm going to keep it as public access. And I'm going to enable Cognito authentication over here. I'm going to choose the user pool. I'm going to choose the identity pool. And then it's going to automatically create an IAM role for us, which allows Elasticsearch in order to go ahead and create app client IDs as well as, uh, I mean, combine our identity pool with our user pool on Cognito side. That's the reason why you need to have this IAM role. So once the entire integration is complete, I'll show you the app client ID on uh, the Cognito side. Okay. And for the domain access policy, we are going to go with the custom access policy wherein we are going to open up IAM in a new tab. So this is something that you guys have to remember. We have to present the IAM role, uh, ARN of the authenticated role. Okay. So let's go to roles. So we will have two roles over here. The auth role, which is for authenticated identities and an auth role for guest users. Let's take the auth role, copy this auth role's ARN and let's paste the ARN over here. So you can see over here that it's mentioning that you can go with account ARN, IAM user ARN, role ARN, or specific IP addresses like just my public IP and so on. So I'm going to go with IAM ARN and the action I'm going to go is allow. So anyone who logs in using this authenticated IAM role, they will be allowed access into Kibana. Uh, HTTPS is totally fine. The rest of the settings, default settings. Click on next, scroll down, click on confirm. So it's going to take at least 10 minutes for this domain to be created. So I will catch you guys once the domain is created. Okay, so hey everyone, it took at least 10 to 12 minutes for the entire domain to come up. So like I mentioned that I told you that I'll show you the app client that it has created in Cognito for us. So I'm, I've just opened up Cognito user pool and on the left side, when you click on app client settings, you will be able to see that I didn't create any of this. Elasticsearch created it for me. That's the reason why we associated and I am role with Elasticsearch for Cognito's integration so that it can go ahead and create our callback URLs with our app client as well as our sign out URLs. Okay, so you can see that it's pretty much the same. I don't see any differences in both of these. Yep. So and at the same time, it also used the OAuth2 authentication flow with authorization code grant, but you can also go ahead and read, about, uh, read out in AWS docs about the implicit grant as well as using uh, the client credentials uh, OAuth flow. As well as the OAuth scopes that are allowed are the phone number, the email, as well as the open ID and the profile. Uh, so other than that, uh, most of these configurations are pretty much the default ones uh, that we may not need to change most of the time. So now let's take a look at whether whatever integration we had enabled, whether it was correct, whether it works properly. Because in our access policy for the Elasticsearch domain, which you can access by clicking on actions and modify access policy, you can see over here that we gave the authenticated IAM role. And the action is ES colon star. So which means pretty much we should be able to do literally any action related to ES provided we are coming from an Cognito's auth role. So therefore let's go ahead and test this out. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one user to the user pool. I'm going to go ahead and click on users and groups under general settings. Click on create user. Let me go ahead and add a new user. Let me add myself. And I don't want to send an invitation right now. The temporary password I'm going to give should confirm to the password policy that we have. So I'm going to specify my password. I don't want to enter, enter the phone number, but the email ID is something that is mandatory. So therefore I'm also going to also mark the email as verified because I don't want to go to my email and then verify my email and so on. I'll just create this simple user. So once we have created this user, you can see that when you log in with this user for the first time, you will be asked to change your password. So let's take a look at that. If everything was correct, Fingers crossed, when we click on Kibana's endpoint, automatically we should get the Cognito's default login page, which it provides for us because of the app client ID that it created. So let's click on this. 
it's still loading wonderful we are amazing it has loaded our auth endpoint and you can see over here this is the customized domain name that we provided kibana hyphen auth hyphen 2395 okay pretty cool let's try that user login right now with the password that we mentioned while creating that user which is the temporary password which means it will ask you to go ahead and create a new password beautiful enter the new password which should again adhere to the password policy i think it shouldn't be the same old password so let me just add an double at the end and click on send so now automatically it should redirect which is a successful login it should automatically redirect to kibana's endpoint wonderful it's starting to load kibana so now all you can do is just have all of your users and groups created uh, in cognito itself over here you can go ahead and create groups and the advantage of using groups is that while you create a group you can also specify an iam role for that group so uh, again you can specify that some people can access kibana's endpoint whereas some people can't that kind of access granular access can also be mentioned which is again amazing so now kibana has loaded we are set and uh, ready to go uh, let's try to do a logout if it's possible so let's expand this let's see if yep let's do a logout it took us back to the cognitos screen which is again amazing this is something that we want let's try a sign up why not let's click on sign up it's asking for the username email id and password let's do that let's add my best friend's name balaji let's go with the same email address password we are adding for him should again confirm to the password policy it's nothing but the same password click on sign up amazing so now it's asking for a verification code that has come to my email address so let's open up our mail let's take a look at the verification code great our verification code is this it has come from cognito themselves so therefore we didn't configure ses for our email server which means cognito itself has used its own email capability let's click on confirm account and we should be redirected to kibana how wonderful is this so long time back i mean to just tell it in short and wrap up for you to do all of these customized authentication and authorization flows took a lot of coding man but now when kibana came into the sorry when cognito came into the picture sorry about that when cognito came into the picture now things have become pretty easy for developers in order to uh, create their own customized uh, authentication flows probably even customize that login page uh, with uh, their own css code and so on so i hope you got a really good idea as to what cognito provides you with i will catch you in the next session where we start our projects thank you and have a great day and stay safe